Amber, I'm back. Um, I hate that it has been this long um, before I can make another video. Um, but I, wow, so much has happened in the last couple of weeks. I don't even really know where to start. Um, first of all, <laughs> nursing school is way more involved than I anticipated it to be. Um, and when I say way more involved, I mean a lot of fucking work. <laughs> so uh, there has been a lot of aggravation and tears and <laughs> just very embarrassing moments and um, yikes. So basically I've just been trying to keep my grades high. Um, I had a little bit of a flub up in the middle of the semester where I missed two classes and the way our school is set up, the classes, certain classes don't have that much work involved in them. So for my physical assessment class, I missed two classes, which meant that the professor didn't give me the points for, ten, for uh, attending class. So my grade dropped below a 70. So of course, I mean, I'm acing tests. You know, I'm thinking, oh, I'm fine. I got a kind of a little nudge from my teacher and she's like, yeah, so just to let you know, you're failing this class. I'm like, I'm doing what? No, I can't possibly be failing a class. So um, she, broke down the point system with me and made sure I knew where I stood and how I could get the points back and whew, thankfully after one test and two more classes I'm finally back up to an A so but the way the point system is set up it it, it can take you really on a roller coaster ride very quickly so that was one scare uh, the second scare was a farm test that we had that I was completely completely unprepared for. I don't know what I ugh. anyway. It was corticosteroids and adrenal drugs and I know this stuff. I work on the nephro floor right now for clinicals. I know this stuff like the back of my hand, but I don't know what it was about that test. It just took me it threw me for a loop. I'll just say that. It just took me completely by surprise. I didn't know what I was doing. So I did pass it though. I actually passed it with a 91, which made me very happy. Um, and I don't know how I pulled that one out of my ass. Ah, shit. I don't know. And, um, after passing that, then, um, I guess both, uh, classes that we were part of actually didn't do well on it. So they curved the grade and took off a few questions that didn't that nobody did well on and um, it actually ended up bringing my grade up to a 96 which was even better so right now I am passing all my classes with straight A's and I cannot say that I've ever been able to say that before in my life but I really think that it's because I like the material and um, so it's it's easier for me to keep my nose in a book and study it um, second thing that's new is I have no life. I have had to turn down about a million invitations to go on outings and um, yeah, so that's it. So Easter, Easter weekend was the first time I had actually really been out of the house doing anything, which was uh, it's kind of sad, but whatever, it's going to pay off because I'm going to be paying these bills in a minute and I'm going to be a bomb ass nurse. So who cares? Anyway, so I had a question, um, come up from a new subscriber. Hey, nice to see you. Hey. Um, and she was asking me about how I take care of childcare. Um, and so I thought I'd make a quick video just to kind of tell you guys about my childcare situation because it is pretty involved and it's a lot. Um, so as everybody knows, I have a four-year-old. He's really cute, he's adorable, he's super smart, um, and he is very busy. Um, and I actually was pregnant with him while I was doing my, um, my um, 
prerequisites for school. So I've kind of always been in a situation where I've always had a baby while I'm schooling. So it's not like a new thing. Um, but this is how our week typically looks. Um, Timmy, my son's name, is now in preschool. Um, we actually found a really great preschool for him. Um, and it's extremely academic and, you know, he comes home with homework, which is like extremely cute that he has homework. It's really adorable. So anyway, um, we, we actually found a preschool for him. So in the mornings, he, um, Monday through Friday, he goes to school. Um, he's there anywhere from between eight o'clock till sometime between three or four. The preschool actually stays open until six, so I can pick him up whenever between those times. I generally try and get him before then. Um, as you guys know, we have a really interesting situation because my husband is also in school. Um, my husband is in school full time. He goes full time. He's in there for his bachelor's in psychology. It, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hilarious. Um, anybody who has a family member in psychology, it's interesting. Conversations are very, very involved. So it's a good thing, but it's interesting. So he's going for his bachelor's in psychology. Um, he goes to U of M. So very good school, very demanding program. Um, and he also works full time as a firefighter. So his schedule is 24 hours on, 24 hours off, 24 hours on, 36 hours off. Uh, 36 hours, no, 72 hours off. So he does work like a little over a 40 hour work week. Plus he goes to school, um, but because of the alternating days, um, he does kind of have days within the week that are usually free. Um, but because he's also in school full time, those days go to school. So uh, basically I rarely see my husband and um, it's been this way for a minute. Sorry about that. I barely see my husband, um, but you know, it works out. So what our schedule usually looks like is um, Tuesday I have clinicals. My clinicals go from uh, 7 a.m. until somewhere around 1.32 ish. So I have to get three cities away to get to my hospital that I'm doing the clinicals at. Um, and so I use a freeway system, um, but you never know what can happen. So I usually allot myself about an hour of time. So at 5 a.m. I get up. I, on Tuesdays, 5 a.m. I get up. I make my coffee. I eat my breakfast. I throw my scrubs on. I get in the car. I drive three cities away until I get to the hospital I'm at at 6.15. I do my clinical from 7 o'clock until whenever. And then I come back and meanwhile, my husband has taken my son to preschool. Um, I pick him up uh, right after I'm done with my clinicals. Um, I may go home and eat and study right afterwards and then go and get him and come home. Um, on Wednesdays um, and Mondays, I take him to school. I drop him back off. Um, and so I have Mondays and Wednesdays free to kind of do what I need to do. On Thursdays and Fridays, I'm in school from nine until whenever. So my husband takes him to, um, to preschool. And um, on days when I can't, you know, I, when, when he's working and he can't take him to preschool, then I take him. So that's the days he's in preschool. Um, during the evening times, we alternate. My husband and I will alternate. My husband will take um, part of the evening, like say if he needs to study, I take care of dinner, teeth brushing, um, bedtime story, that kind of stuff. Homework, because my four-year-old has homework and it's really cute, but it's also a lot of work. Um, I take care of homework and I, um, you know, put him to bed. 
on nights when I have something due or I really, really have to study, I will just kind of park myself over on this couch right here, whip out my homework, study my husband without a beat, doesn't miss a beat, picks him up, takes him upstairs, brushes his teeth, washes his face, bedtime story, puts him in bed. Um, so we kind of have like kind of an egalitarian system that works for us here in the house. And then um, every once in a while there's a hiccup with preschool and where we can't get him to preschool or, you know, like this week is Easter break, so he doesn't have any preschool this week. Um, and during this week, um, my husband's parents who live about 20 minutes away, graciously, very graciously and thankfully have picked up the, the missing area where preschool hasn't been. And before preschool uh, was available, we actually used them full time and they were gracious enough to make themselves available to us to use full time. Um, now I realize that my situation is very blessed and I'm very blessed in that I have family and preschool and a husband who doesn't mind helping out. Everybody doesn't have that situation. Um, so, and we didn't always have that situation. So for um, people who are wondering about what childcare options they may have um, during nursing school, you will need childcare. You absolutely will. You cannot take your kid to school with you. You just are not gonna have the time to study while your kid is running around throwing Cheerios everywhere. It's just just not a good idea. So um, there are uh, Head Start programs if you qualify financially um, for them. Um, the Head Start program is amazing. It's a great program. Um, teaches your kids academics and you know cultural things that they're going to need before they go to school. Um, if Head Start is not something that you qualify for, and you can't do sometimes, and I know a lot of colleges are doing this more and more, the college themselves will offer you a childcare program. Um, the college sometimes has a childcare facility right on campus, and sometimes they'll roll it right into your tuition. So if you're receiving financial aid, you can just roll your financial aid into the cost of tuition and get your childcare paid for right on, on campus. So you just pack up your baby, take your baby to, to class with you, drop your baby off at the child care center and then you walk right to class and it's right on campus. So talk to your your school and see if, if they have that option available. Um, at my school, it's a kinder care. And um, at a lot of schools, uh, they have their own specific uh, child care center right um, under the, the heading of the school. So talk to your counselor and see what options they have Family is a great option if you trust your family, if they're good with your kid, if you feel comfortable leaving your kid with your family. Some people don't, I understand. Um, that's always a good option is to try to ask and utilize family support. Hey, I'm going to school, I'm trying to make myself into a better person. Help me out, can you watch You know, the kids for um, three hours a week three hours every day, you know, however many hours you need for that to happen. And um, of course, spousal support. If if you're in the position where you have uh, a spouse who can help you with your kid, um, I would definitely suggest that. I know everybody isn't and that's okay too, um, but definitely think about the ways that are free to utilize because childcare can become very, very expensive. And if you're not using your financial aid, which I, I'm just going to say right now, I am a recipient of financial aid. I thank God for it because I would not be able to be going to school without it. Um, if you are a person who receives financial aid, please look into the um, child care allowances that they actually have in there rolled into it. And then also, um, when you file your taxes, your taxes give you a uh, portion uh, back for your child care. So if, you know, to preschool and, you know, child care is so expensive. It's like ridiculous. And I, I mean, when I was a kid, I would babysit, I would get maybe 15 bucks for the whole night. Child care is like ridiculously expensive. We're talking like upwards of $100 a week, you know, $400 a month. And that's cheap. 
So, I mean, um, definitely look into the government programs that allow you to pay for your childcare. Um, you need to go to school. You need to get your degree. You need to better yourself. You need to find a job. You need to work. So therefore you need to um, maybe utilize a program that might help you to be able to afford it. Don't feel bad. Don't, um, you know, be guilty, feel guilty. Use it, use it. Um, utilize financial aid, utilize it. F talk to your college and, and see what uh, their allowances and provisions are for childcare within the campus. And um, if all else fails, preschool. Preschool works really well. Head Start is a great program. Head Start is free. It is free. It is free. It's free. So um, I hope this helps and um, I hope kind of gave you a little bit of a uh, look into how child care works for me um, because it is difficult. It really is. Um, and, and I just want to make one more little note here. Um, when I don't have Timmy somewhere else, like if Timmy is sick, because kids get sick all the time, if Timmy is sick and he's not at school and my husband is not home, Timmy is with me. And it is really hard to get my homework done. It really, really is. And I'm not going to lie. I do rely heavily on my Chromecast. Mother of the year right here. Yeah, I'm saying. Uh, sometimes, look, Netflix is like $9 a month. Uh, they have educational programs on there. Set your kid up with a table. Say, it's time for you to do your homework. I'm going to do my homework. Set them up with a coloring book and... Um, a chart full of numbers and letters let them copy the numbers and letters while you sit on the other side and do your homework when they get bored of that turn on super y and the super readers uh shoot barney works really well and you know just for a couple hours so you can do your homework and you can get your studying done it is hard to be in nursing school with a kid but it is completely doable and if you are out there and you're a mother and you are taking care of one child, two children, multiple children. I believe in you. My hat is off to you. I absolutely know you can do it. Um, just know that I'm in the same boat and we're, we're awesome. We're mothers. We are get it done people. We figure out a way to do everything. So it can be done. You deserve to go to school. You deserve to better yourself and you absolutely deserve to um, to invest in yourself. So I know you can find a way to get it taken care of. And if you need my help in any way, shape or form, just send me a message down in the comment box or send me a private message. Um, and I can even help you look and I can help you work it out. We'll work it out together. All right. Uh, this has been great and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.